I'm Steve Spacey and this is Mark Richard and uh, we're Africa High Tech. I think what, what makes this collaboration work really well is we both have the same outlook on music. We have a similar background and we like similar music, but the way we look at music is that we want it to be free, open. We don't want to like put boundaries on anything. We want it just to, we just make the music and it turns out wherever it is. It's not like, oh, we're going to make something that fits into this. We just make the music and it comes out and then we let it be free. Warm welcome, Africa High Tech. Maybe late 80s when Detroit Techno came over. I remember I was talking to Derek May a long time ago and he was saying to me about how him and a couple of guys, they came over and they played in this spot in London. And basically what they said was they were playing in this spot. It was a massive hall and it was a bar at the other end of, the, of this hall. They're playing this music, this crazy music, and all the people that were there, literally they had their backs turned to them. Like they were at the bar just drinking, you know, like suits, you know, guys from offices or whatever. So they were just there, just doing their thing, just hanging out, not even thinking about it. And then they, he said to me, they came back six months later, all of a sudden they were like people like, you know, t-shirts, track suits, you know, Converse trainers, you know, Acid House t-shirts. And it was just like, they were like superstars. And so that whole thing, you can imagine, you, you know, with what Mark was saying about the whole history of us, like growing up and listening to all this music and then us hearing all this stuff, you know, Larry Heard and Finger Zinc and all these people, just hearing that sound and then combining that whole sensibility with reggae and the whole sound system thing. And just that whole kind of thing of being in a club and being able to feel the bass line of the music, do you know what I mean? Because it's like you know, that vibration somehow, you know, people just can't deny that, do you know what I mean? Somehow it just makes sense. It speaks to people without words. I was in a gallery recently, there's a piece of art I've always wanted to see in my whole life um, by uh, an artist called Hieronymus Bosch and it's, a, it's, I think it's the Garden of Earthly Delights. So it's a triptych, it's three kind of panels for maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. And I noticed that within the, the first time I looked at it, I probably saw about 5% and then as I stood there for longer and longer and longer, all of a sudden this thing opened up and that instantly made me want, had ideas, sounds, as I was looking at it, I was seeing sounds, I was I was I wanted to go straight back to the studio actually and just mm. you know make some music straight away. I'm inspired by people that just do things that are just I suppose beyond. Like this this that painting for example is sound it just looks like nothing else. It's so ahead of its time and I, I'm, I'm I get inspired by people that are just next level at what they do. What I used to love when I when I used to go in clubbing when I was a kid. That's what I wanted to hear when I went to a club. I wanted to hear something that just blew my head off. It just would just, you know, that that's that that's what I've always wanted. And when we DJ and when we play, that's what we try and keep as our kind of ethos. And taking risks. A lot of people dumb down when they DJ. And I think that these people need to hear that music in the right way. And then, and, you know, even when I started playing footwork for the first time in Australia, I was wondering what was going to happen. But people didn't really know what to do, but they kind of, you could see people were like, this has got a mad energy to it. I don't know how to move to it, but I can feel this. And the more you play it, the more people get their heads around it more. And that's how music develops. It goes, it goes in waves. You know, there, there might be a few years where I'm having a nightmare and I feel like I want to give up DJing, you know, because people are threatening me. I've been threatened before, like DJ, people come and go, what the f is this? 
nonsense are you playing? Like, <laughs> just like sticking their fingers up and trying to fight me. And, you know, there's been, there's been times where I've been like, you know, am, am I in the right job here? Maybe I should, uh, maybe I'm not, should be doing this. Yeah. But, you know, but then it goes in waves. I find that then, you know, it changes, things change. And I know so many people that are obsessed by having plugins. Mm -hmm. Got every plugin, but they don't make any music. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like you got to watch that a little bit. Sometimes it's good to, you know. I mean, I, I like having new gear, and I like being inspired by new gear. But also, I think you need to watch that a little bit because sometimes it's another excuse for not doing things. Oh, if I had this thing, I'd be able to do this. You know, yeah. when in fact you can do it with whatever if you want to get it out. Essentially, um, we've been using the. Um, Icin. This is a kind of like the basic, the basic version of a track that we did um, when we was at the uh, Sonar Music Festival last year. We did a quick promotion, which is, it was just like 24 hours. Like you could download this thing while whilst we were there. It was called Go Go Wild, and it's just something we knocked up on this. So I'll, I'll give you a quick little blast of it. So essentially, it's like um, you know, it's working on this accelerate accelerometer um, feature on a phone, and you can kind of assign that to each uh, track. So you can assign it to the two mono uh, monophonic synths, and you can assign it to the drums. But also, if you know what you're doing, you can assign it to certain aspects of the drums as well. Like you can assign it to the kick or the snare or the hi hat, and it's just a load of fun. You know, you can come up with really simple ideas. Like we started uh, 93 million miles on this on the, on, on the actual uh, iPod, and that's when I mean, you listen to 93 million miles. That's the basic sound of. of I sit, you know what I mean? Right, so but but when you when you when you say to people sometimes, oh you know, you can um you can do professional music on the on the iPhone or iPod, they go, really? What are you talking about? You know, because they're, they're sitting in their studios and they can't see past it, but ultimately you can just make music on anything. I mean I can just I can make a tune right now and here, you know what I mean? Just get a mic and just you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. But if the emotion's in there and the soul's in there and the feel and the swing, then that's a tune right there and it could go to number one. So yeah, it's mad. You know, you can you can make an album on this machine and upload it and get it out there to the world, you know what I mean? It, it, uh, for me, that's beautiful. Because that's like, you know, that's the, the immediacy of, of music, you know what I mean? You can just get it out there, right there and then, and just get people to feel your vibe. Right the way, 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 right the way. Definitely try and be open, first off. And also, a really good way of always progressing is, um, is to try and put yourself into situations where you're out of your comfort zone. That's where it's good, you know, like where you, where you kind of, you, you're, put, you're putting yourself out there and you could crash and burn. Do you know what I mean? Like, but you just got to have a go and see where you end up because I think you end up learning quite a lot, you know, like, you know, things that maybe you're a bit adverse to, you know what I mean? It's, it's maybe worth trying them out. Well, know? for example, mm -hmm. um, when you started out, you were, were not a singer. Yeah, I wasn't, a, exactly, I wasn't a singer, you know. Yeah. I used to just produce and make music and I used to hang out with uh, some friends of mine um, and they were all singers and we used to jam and whatever and one day, I don't, know, I don't know what happened, like we was jamming and I just started singing, I just maybe sang a line or whatever, it just came out and, um, and they said to me, man, you should be singing, do you know what I mean? So I started singing, but you know, before then, it, it never even occurred to me, really, you know? So it, it's good and, and, and also as well, you know, that in itself, that's, that's a big jump because then I knew that at some point I'd have to be on stage in front of a situation, fronting something. So that's, that's again, I'm like, I have to come well out of my comfort zone. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, I've got to go and do something that I never even imagined I would even do. And now I love it so much and I love being on stage, but, you know, essentially I never thought that I'd ever be there. I've always had this kind of naive thing where I'm like, if you really, really go for it and do, and do what you believe in, you'll get something back somewhere. And it's kind of happened for me. There's been times where I've been like, how, can I, you know, how can I do this? So even in the last five, 10 years with the industry, it's like, how can I keep putting this amount of energy? And then there's no guarantees, but then, Lo and behold, something just drops in at the point where I'm like, how, uh, how can I keep going, you know, how can I survive? And then bang, mm. something happens. Radiohead asks me to remix them. Or, you know, uh, some, uh, you know some, something that gets used in a TV program. Or, mm. you know, I've always had that kind of thing. It's kind of worked for me, you know, I've kind of like, has kind of kept me going, you know. But I think if you do put a lot of energy into something and you really work hard, you, you will get something back eventually. Maybe it might not be monetary, but it, you'll get some feedback or somebody you'll, that you respect will say that they're a big fan and they're inspired by what you do. And that's what gives you that thing back to keep pushing and keep fighting away in, a, you know, in, in this industry.
Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.